Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to a AAA Northeast webinar about the return to travel and the Diamond Inspection Program. My name is Dave Raposa. I am Managing Director of Public and Government Affairs at AAA Northeast, and we have a special welcome today for our AAA Diamond Rated Properties who have taken the time uh, to join in and listen and hear from the experts about what the future is of the inspection program. As COVID you know, started moving into the rearview mirror a little bit, we heard two things from our members, that they really want to travel, but that they want to travel safely. And that safety would be a, perhaps the highest priority. Well, fortunately, at the same time, our national office was looking at it the same way. How do we assure that our members who for 80 years have trusted us with inspections of hotels and restaurants throughout North America, how can we assure them that those places are safe to go and visit? So that's what today is about because we have the answer to that. And we are very fortunate from our national office. I don't know who's in charge of the diamond program today because I see everybody on my screen, but we're gonna hear from uh, Scott Hammerly, who is the director of the diamond program at AAA National. Then we're gonna hear from Don Kiefer, who is the regional manager of the diamond program. And then we're gonna get a slightly different angle from Julie Hall. Julie is our uh, public relations manager and her specialty is travel. So we'll get all, a lot of different perspectives today. Um, Please put any questions that you might have in the chat and we'll try to get to them as we can. So we won't make you wait any longer. I'd like to turn it over to Scott to update you on the status of inspections and the whole new program that you're gonna be hearing a lot about. Scott? Absolutely, thank you so much. Um, you know, we are really excited to get a chance to, to speak with all of you. Um, as you can see, uh, we are getting back out on the road. I had hoped to make it to a hotel and have a much better background than this. I'm in a, a travel center in Delaware right now. So um, any of you guys that are around there now, now you're going to be looking for uh, looking for us. But um, we are getting back out there, uh, which is really really exciting. Uh, but we're getting back out there also in uh, with some some new uh, tools in the tool belt, and we're we're really really excited uh, about. Um, you know, there's new innovation in, in sharing with that with you. And the great thing is it's not going to require anything more of our hotel partners. The key is that it's really going to be a great way just to communicate out all the great things that you're already doing. All right, so we can go to the, the first slide. Um, you know, I want to give a little bit of background, make sure everybody is aware uh, really of, of AAA and, and a couple of things about the Diamond program as we get started. You know, we, we've heard that there's a lot of new people in the industry and there's a lot of people um, with staffing that are coming in and out. And so we just want to take a moment to, to kind of re, re uh, ground everybody in, in what we are and, and kind of what the program's about. AAA has over 62 million members in uh, U.S. and Canada. And that is, we're adding 22,700 new members daily. Right, so through this, through the pandemic and everything else, our membership has been growing, um, and I think a lot of people saw at the end or when the pandemic first started, right, and then how AAA was able to advocate to them in the travel industry, et cetera. You know, the truly the value of of the uh, AAA membership itself, and now as they're starting to travel again, uh, they're they're really uh, reaching out and and asking about the Diamond program and what it brings to them. Uh, we do. 27,000 um, restaurants every year. We have got those listed, and we go see 26,000 hotels every single year. Um, so we are the industry-leading um, inspection program that is out there, and we really reflect our member expectations. We take the time to do surveys and work to make sure that we know what they want to see and what their expectations are when they show up at a hotel. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but AAA members spend $40 billion annually on U.S. hotel room nights, $40 billion. That's 31% of all bookings in the United States uh, room nights are done by AAA members. So it's the access and the communication that happens through the Diamond program 
uh, really can't be overstated. And so we really think that puts us in a unique position to advocate for the travel industry. And, and the innovations you're going to hear today really, uh, I think, uh, um, are the, the perfect spot to communicate and, again, advocate for the industry as we try to ramp back up. Um, we can go to the next slide. So what, why AAA inspections? You know, one of the, the things that, you know, we talk about the value proposition and there's so many rating programs out there and everything else that, that's going on. So why, why, what's the AAA inspection difference? These are full-time AAA associates. They are independent and professionally trained, right? You can go to other rating systems and it's, you know, I live near Daytona Beach and um, you get a lot of different reasons why people go to Daytona Beach and why they may like what they're doing at Daytona Beach. You don't always know that that's going to match. If I'm going with my family, the college kid who's going to Daytona versus me might have some different opinions about what we, why, why that hotel was awesome in Daytona Beach. Um, or that could be anywhere, right? The great thing about the, the AAA inspectors are it is objective criteria. So you know you can match your experience to what you want and what you're looking for. It's on site, it's in person, and it's objective. Okay. Um, the other key thing is, and I know you all know this, right? The, the unscheduled aspect of that really allows us to reflect exactly what our members are going to experience when they walk into that hotel. Okay. And finally, the big piece is that everybody that passes must pass our, uh, everybody gets a designation must pass our, our housekeeping standard. And, you know, that's really, really, really important today now more than ever. And that's that component we're really going to talk more deeply about and that I, I know that our members are most concerned about based on the research we've done over the last year. We can go to the next slide. So as we look at how do we support uh, travel recovery um, and, and what, are, what exactly is it that our members are saying they want, uh, we did research over the last year, as I mentioned, and AAA uh, remains, and the Diamond Program remains the top trusted source for travel and hotel guidance among our 62 million members. Um, you know, they, they, they look at family and friends, and other than that, it's us, right? And that's who they're looking at, and they're, they're asking for information. They trust us, and it's that independent, um, you know, objective criteria that they're looking for. We also know that travelers want independent validation of hotel cleaning performance. One of the things that we've learned is when they look at the websites and they see, and, and look, we work with a lot of uh, our brand partners and other hotels doing absolutely amazing job on creating new protocols and new cleanliness standards out there and are really just doing an amazing job with limited staff in many cases. Um, but what we've heard is that it's one thing if a hotel says, we're doing this, 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 and this, right? And it's activity-based. Here's the things we're doing. Versus what they really want is, is that working? They want to know from an independent validation, is it working? What's the impact? What's the effectiveness of those uh, products? And we also asked them, said, okay, what, uh, all these things we could add to an inspection, what would be the thing that would get you to trust and feel, uh, you know, that your confidence was up enough to travel again? By far, the number one thing was surface testing. Okay, so they've asked, and they said, we want independent surface testing from a trusted source. Well, guess what? That is us. We have, we're in that space more than anybody else. Uh, we see more hotels than anybody else, and we have more uh, people out in the field than anybody else can do, and it just really leaves us in this sweet spot. And I think what's important to know about what we're doing with this innovation is the COVID-19 pandemic, we truly believe, has changed the way people view cleanliness in an ongoing way. But we wanted to build a program that was not just about COVID, it was not just about the individual, uh, this particular thing, right? Because in the, in the past, it's been E. coli or it's been bird flu, avian, you know, avian flu. It's been, you know, swine flu, you name it, right? We've, we've had things that have come along, but I think this one has, has hit people in a different way, obviously with the, the social impact it's had. Um, and so we think that is going to stick with us and that's going to stay. So we wanted to build a program that is broad spectrum, not just focused on COVID, that would have legs long into the future and be something that will um, continue to satisfy that changed view and expectation for cleanliness of our members. Okay, so we can go to the next slide. 
So what we're what we've been adding is what we have added, and we'll be out in the field uh, soon with um, officially is ATP detection. Many of you probably have these in your properties already, in food and beverage locations, et cetera. This is a very established technology that's recognized by the CDC, uh, the National Institute of Health, the UK um, uh, Health Services, you name it. It's, it's a very established technology, over 30 years old. This is really just the first time it's been used um, in a broad way for the hospitality industry, specifically the hotel industry, in the rooms. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Not, you know why we shorten that and use the acronym um, instead of having to say that all the time. Um, and ATP is an energy uh, carrying molecule that's found on the cells of, of all living things, right? And so all ATP tests for is it's looking for the, either the, the absence or the presence of that molecule. And that tells us how much biological material is on a surface, okay? And so our intention is with this program, we're simply looking for evidence of a consistently applied cleaning protocol. This technology is used in hospitals, it's used in education, it's used in all kinds of different ways. We are not trying to create a new standard for the industry, right? All we are simply looking for is, can I, do I have evidence, scientific objective evidence that those cleaning protocols are being applied consistently? We are not going to hold, um, Using, we're not going to be using a threshold holding people to a uh, hospital grade um, cleanliness, right? So we're because we're not we're not this is not an operating room, right? So we're not opening people up, we're not encouraging people to eat off their bathroom counters, right? So we're not going to be trying to hold you to those standards. So we we have done a ton of testing. We're going to talk a little bit about exactly what we've gone through to do this in the pilot, but you know I think the key thing I want you to know is what we have seen is just doing what you've already done, just following through on the protocols that you've already developed, is far and away enough to achieve this. What this really wants to do is, is show people, show our consumers, show our members that what you're doing is being effective, right? And that's gonna be that independent validation. And so we're, well, this is not gonna require anything new from you. Um, and in fact, we've seen um, pass rates that are almost uh, perfectly consistent with our, with our traditional pass rates uh, for our regular inspections. Okay? And the last point I want to make on this is that um, it does not identify viruses. Okay? And we are not testing for anything specific. And I know you're probably thinking, wait, COVID's a virus. This is the middle of this pandemic. Well, the interesting thing about viruses is they have to live in a host, right? And so they have to get their energy from something else. They replicate everything else inside of another living cell. So if you get rid of all of those other hosts, you get rid of all the biological material that they would survive in, um, right? So it, it oftentimes it's respiratory particles or other things that that has passed in. But well, that would be, all those respiratory particles, um, all of that stuff would be picked up, right? So we would know the presence of any of the carriers and other things uh, that might be carrying that or that that it would be in. And so this is a a broad spectrum measure of cleanliness, right? That is really going to allow us to know quickly. It takes five seconds to run one of these tests, which is why it's used consistently in hospitals right before uh, surgery. It's also used in food and beverage a lot for cross-contamination. That's where many of you probably have seen this or may, may not even know what it was. Maybe you, you have people using these today in your, in your uh, properties because uh, it picks up if there's chicken or anything else. So it's ways to avoid salmonella um, and any kind of other cross-contamination because you can be sure that those surfaces are perfectly clean of any biological uh, material, okay? All right, so we can go to the next uh, next slide. So as we as we look at the way that we communicate, the way that we share this, we're excited about um, I think streamlining the way that people understand the uh, diamond inspection and the designation, as well as giving uh, properties that we work with um, and that are members of our OA program, which we'll talk about um, a little bit later. Um, the opportunity to communicate that they've now been um, inspected and that we've done this testing. We do think this is a major part of the recovery. Um, so if you see there in the middle, we've always done quality, cleanliness, condition, and hospitality as our main components, right? And so now we've kind of bucketed this cleanliness, condition, and the ATP testing together um, into what we're calling inspected clean. 
and it's got the, if you see all the way on the far right hand side, that's our traditional uh, designation, what you've seen. But we've added an inspected clean to it at the bottom. Uh, we also have one alternate version of this. Uh, we've already had people asking us about, can I put this on billboards? Can I do this? What can I do with this to, to share this information? Because they, they know it's going to be impactful. Um, and so we, we think that, or we're excited about the, the look of this and the opportunity that that's going to give for you to communicate, uh, again, that independent third-party source of, uh, you know, what you've been doing and the effectiveness of what you've been doing. Uh, so the, but the components themselves are all going to stay the same except for the addition of this, the ATP testing, and it is just one piece of the broader inspection. However, I do think it's important to, to communicate Every single property that receives a designation from here forward will have to pass the ATP um, portion of this uh, because we 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 think that that's just you know it's either it's either going to be clean or it's not right and so there's no way to say that well they didn't pass it but let me still recommend this to you uh, so it's really uh, going to be a core component of this moving forward uh, but again we don't think that that's going to be a a big burden for people um, as we move forward. Okay. Next slide. I think one of the key things too, um, as we talk about this, the, the value that this brings is really three areas, right? So it's, it's to our, the hotel industry, to our members, and to us, honestly. Um, there's no incremental cost to you. So we're not, if you have looked into having companies come out and give you any kind of uh, designation like this, um, it's thousands if not tens of thousands of dollars to have somebody come out, uh, Test your property. Um, they're going to they're going to um, you know have to you have to schedule and they're going it's going to be a, a whole big process. We're not asking for anything else from you, all right? Other than wel welcoming our inspectors in when they when they come. And I know it's not always the most convenient time, uh, but I think it's really important to to know the impact of of what this is going to do to the industry. Uh, so that we're not asking. There's no incremental cost. Uh, where there's going to be no charges for that. Um, and it is going to give you that independent validation of those cleaning protocols. Uh, you know, you're putting a lot of time, money, and energy into that, and now you'll get to really have that validation, and in a way that's not pay for play, right? And that's why we wanted to make sure that this was um, no incremental cost, because that's part of the value prop to the to the members and to the travelers. They know we have no stake in the game, right? So we they know that we're not profiting just by making sure that we give you that that stamp. Unlike everybody else right in that industry, um, this stamp is coming through um, and it's completely independent, completely objective. Okay. You know, for our members, it really is going to uh, rebuild their confidence, fulfills their number one uh, requested uh, inspection component. There's not many times in business where people tell you on a survey, this is the thing we want and it's right in your sweet spot and something you can execute on in the short term. That's exactly what happened, right? So we're really excited about that. And, and the buzz that we're getting from it right now has been absolutely wonderful. Uh, thanks to Julie getting all the, the word out and uh, letting people know all the information that's going on. Uh, you know, we're really getting uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of excitement about that, and hopefully you feel the same way. Um, and it's going to give that independent validation um, and evaluation that they've been looking for. And for us, honestly, right, it, it, it's all about meeting our member expectations, and we think this is going to meet and exceed that and drive relevance with all travelers. Um, you know, we're always looking at whether, it, you know, as you guys are looking at what amenities are in your hotel, what are the things that I'm trying to do, what services am I offering, and you're always start trying to stay relevant with your, with your guests. And it's the same thing for us. What is the information that people are looking for today? Um, and we're just excited to be able to deliver on that um, in, in now and into the future, okay? And it just continues to strengthen AAA uh, travel as a brand itself. As a market leader, like I said, the, the 40 billion and 31% of all room nights, uh, we are really a, a truly a market leader in this industry. Okay, you can go to the next slide. As we went through the pilot, and this is uh, some key stuff that we we have gotten questions on about how did you how did you come to this and how did you determine your baseline? How do you know this works? We did 11,000 uh, surface tests at over a thousand uh, hotel properties. Um, and we collaborated with, with Charm Sciences uh, to assess current baselines. And we developed a AAA standard for, um, for, the, for ATP testing. Uh, you know, for the most part, baseline scores were really, really strong. Um, and they aligned with the, the physical inspection. 
Um, you know, as I said, the pass rates are, are, are very uh, similar. We gathered a lot of great feedback. So we talked to, uh, through surveys, we, we've asked both brand leaders that are our, our brand partners, as well as the, the on-site leaders who have, uh, we've been in there, right? So over a thousand properties that we've been in and we surveyed them and it's amazing how positive they were. Uh, we actually had to tell our inspectors because at first we were allowing them to test other places that the, the GMs and the leaders and the, the hotels wanted them to do. And it was costing too much money because they were like, can you, can you do my gym? And can you do this? And hey, what about the front desk? And can you come here? And I finally had to, okay, look, one, it's awesome that everybody's as excited about it, but um, I'm going to run out of uh, swabs before the end of the pilot if we keep doing this. So um, I think that it's, when people see it and they've been involved with it, they really are, they understand what it means and what it can do for them. Um, and so they were extremely supportive in the surveys. Actually, the people who saw it in the field were actually more supportive than the brand people at the corporate office that we had been talking to and working with. So that just shows that in our part of our launch is really to make sure that we're communicating the details of what this actually does, what the machine is, so we're going to talk a little bit later about all the things that are available um, for you to learn and understand um, about this and, and even share with your with your teams if necessary. So the last piece that, that I do want to hit on is, is our work with Charm Sciences. So Charm Sciences is the group that we're working with. Um, there are, are uh, the vendor that we chose for the ATP testing. There's a lot of great companies out there. Um, and they have gone through, though, and they have independently certified every single diamond inspector uh, that we have. And they have made sure that they meet the standards and they're using the machine properly. They understand how to calibrate the machine, how to get accurate results, how to know when something's not going right, um, and how to actually do the swab itself to get, get good um, results. So we're very, very uh, happy that they've, you know, gone through the whole team and, and made sure that we were all, everybody was, uh, was certified. Um, they also did a lot of work with us to make sure that the baselines we were setting were accurate and were something that we could stand behind. So what we did is we, we, we did a statistical analysis of all of those 11,000 uh, surface tests. And we kind of looked at one standard deviation above that mean to make sure that we were catching and say, look, this is, what, this is what good, solid performance looks like today in the industry. And we're looking for those outliers, we're looking for those ones where people are not delivering on the brand promise. They're not looking um, at, you know, continuing to consistently apply those cleaning protocols that they've put in place. Then Charm did a, a study where they went into clean, ready rooms that they were staying in as their people were, were traveling around the country, and they watched how ATP increased over their stay, right? And so they, they measured it themselves. What that allows us to do is, is verify that we're measuring what we think we're measuring, right? Because if we're measuring for that, that cleanliness of that room and how that changes as somebody stays in there, you should see that increase, and that's exactly what we saw. And the last piece that, that Charm did is they went in and they did um, more of a hospital grade test where they did a swab um, that is measures aerobic plate counts um, and work, measures the aerobic counts, which are what are the things that will grow on these plates? What are the things that will actually come out and grow that you can measure? Is the bar we're setting, is this, this, this measure um, where we said, okay, this is this and below is what is acceptable. Is that truly something we can stand behind? Does it show that something is has a higher level of cleanliness? And that's exactly what we saw. And so they were very, very happy with the results that we got from those aerobic plate counts. And we felt like it really gave us that scientific backing to say this is both a fair measure, but it's also a solid measure that we can stand behind. And that's really what brought us to this point. Now, we're not going to be sharing the, the exact number and what's out there, one, uh, you know, for proprietary and competitive reasons, but two, the number just doesn't mean anything to anybody, right? It would be very confusing to our, to our uh, members, to our to the guests, and when you compare against over other machines, the numbers don't even line up, right, because they're all calibrated specifically to their technology. So what's really important, though, is, is about that pass and that baseline and the that, again, we are not also trying to set a standard for the industry. We don't want that to become the norm. Um, this is really about us being able to recommend um, a particular property to our members um, and something that we're comfortable with. Okay. And, a lot, and actually, so June 28th is the big day. That is when our inspectors will be officially out there and the uh, inspections will be counting. As I said, as you can see, we're, we're out and we're traveling again. 
Um, the inspectors have actually been traveling for a little while. Um, they have been uh, doing the pilot for, for well over six months now, and it's been uh, wonderful to see them uh, getting engaged and learning and gathering that information. And, and so now we as leaders are getting back out there and getting to see what's happening. Um, and so we're going to be excited about uh, seeing everything that's going on. So if you guys can, um, if you guys can, you know, if you see us and you're out there, you know that we're, we're going to be uh, rocking and rolling here soon. But uh, June 28th is the day that all ATP is happening and it will be, um, it, it will be official then and every single uh, inspection will include ATP. All right, so now we can go to the next slide. Um, so as I said, June 28th, you know, I think that one of the keys for us was that it had to be quick and easy as we looked at the pilot. We've already trained our inspectors. You know, the results have been, have been um, absolutely uh, strong. So, you know, it, we were worried, is this going to integrate well and easily? Um, as I said, it takes five seconds for the test to run itself, about uh, 15 seconds probably for the entire swab process and everything. Um, if you, uh, later on, we're going to have some slides for you, but we actually have a video um, on our um, site that you can see and see how the machine is used and, and follow along with it uh, if you're curious about the way that the machine works. And, uh, you know, that'll be super simple for you to, to kind of go in and watch, and I think it makes it much easier to understand. Okay, we'll go to the next, next slide. Uh, this one's just more for fun, I think. Um, it's just people are always wondering how things turned out. And um, so remember, higher is worse, right? So that means there's more stuff found on a particular thing, right? So these are actual, survey, these are actual results from our 11,000 swabs. And man, is it, isn't that not always that darn TV remote, right? Every time you see some kind of investigative journalist going on, it's always the TV remote that's the problem. Well, it continues to be. Uh, I know some of the properties are excited to get, uh, you know, where they're having people use their phones, either through Bluetooth or uh, through the, uh, you know, through their own app that you can control your, they can't wait to get rid of that TV remote, right? I think that, uh, but it, here you go. You can see that that's still a, a problem. Um, but overall, I think the most important thing is to, to show that every single one of these on average still uh, performs better. And we're not going to uh, fail somebody just because they missed one spot, right? It's, that's not what it's about. Again, it's about finding evidence of a consistently applied cleaning protocol, all right? We can go to the next slide. So, uh, as I said, we're not going to be... We're not going to be telling somebody just because they the TV remote didn't turn out well. Uh, what we're actually going to be doing is in, in, uh, doing eight surfaces in the uh, guest room only. We originally were looking at some public spaces and other things, and there was just too much variability, honestly, uh, too much noise because, you know, you have a group come through. My boys play hockey, and I can tell you if a hockey team had just gone through one of your public spaces, it was not going to pass, right? Probably just the, the, the hockey bags themselves moving through the lobby might make it not pass there, uh, you know. So the what we are doing, so it's going to be in room, and that's a controlled environment. It's, again, it shows that that's not going to be a space where people have just moved through. So um, it's also 75% of those swabs that we do. So, um, and we know that it's a very difficult time in the industry. So what we've instituted as well is if, if those swabs fail, you have a couple, we will retest two of those swabs in the same exact location in the next room. We usually do a minimum of three to four rooms. Um, and what we're looking for then is saying, okay, maybe one housekeeper struggled or you had a particular one room, uh, you know, somebody just missed a spot or two. Let's test it in the next, next room. And we think that's fair that if those same spots fail again in that next room, right, there's evidence then in that cleaning protocol is not being applied properly. And there's something there that's of concern, right? And so that's a truly, we think, a good, fair balance to um, the concerns around staffing or, hey, you hit one bad room. That's the thing we hear, right? We hit one bad room. But I, I think on the, the flip side of that, remember, when our guests check in with you, they're going to get one room, right? They get one place. And so we really are trying to reflect the experience that our members will get when they show up. And that's what that inspection does. But we also know it needs to be fair. So we, we put that in. And uh, we think that's a good balance. And you can see in the bottom right-hand uh, side there, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, those are the actual locations. Um, all of this information will be on the 
uh, the AAA.biz uh, site that we will share some information um, that has all of that on there, and uh, you can go through each of those. Um, and if, if some, for some reason somebody does fail, right, and again, we've seen pass rates that are very, very consistent with, with where we have been. Um, we have a, uh, an appeals process that we've always had that we'll continue to have. Um, and then anybody, people can reapply uh, in the next year. And so I think that it's, you know, because the pass rates have been very, very consistent, um, we're going to just continue to use our, our, our previously existing processes. Um, and honestly, what we're seeing more during the pilot is condition issues, things that would have already potentially failed in a traditional inspection. And it's not ATP only that's causing um, some of the things, the failures that we are seeing, that places that are not passing ATP would have also not passed for other uh, things that, that have popped up. So we don't, again, expect this to be a, a big deal. Um, we just think it will be a big deal to our consumers, not our, our hotel partners, okay? All right, we can go to the next slide. So I think the key thing here is, is if we look at, you know, rebuilding consumer confidence, um, you know, as, as I've talked about, it's inspected clean. Um, it's giving travelers the independent validation they want. We know you're working hard. This is gonna give you that independent validation that you can share. It's objective, scientific, and it's gonna affirm the cleaning effectiveness that you're already doing. And I truly believe this, we are uniquely positioned, uh, you know, as a top 20 trusted brand in North America. Um, you know, we're gonna deliver that in trusted independent validation of cleanliness. And together, we can rebuild confidence for a successful recovery for the hotel industry. Right? So very, very excited about where this is gonna go, and hopefully you are too. And we're gonna have some more information, you know, as we go along on this. So if we can go to the next slide. All right, Don, can I throw it over to you? Do you mind going through some of this? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to share some of the detail about the launch timing. Right now, we are in that pre-launch phase where we're really focused on announcing to the industry what's going on. So it's doing webinars like this and making sure that everyone is prepared. Um, we also developed a lot of website materials, just like Scott mentioned. We have a whole website of resources available for everyone. If you'll write down this website, I don't think we have it on this screen, but it's approved.aaa.biz. And that is a site that you can go to that just has a wealth of information. It answers questions for the hotels about why are we doing this? It tells the story that Scott shared today about what ATP is. It has that online demonstration of the device so you can actually see how the machine works in action. So that's what we're working on now to make sure that everyone is prepared. And then after June 28th, we're gonna continue that outreach and continue to meet with management companies, continue to do club meetings just like we are today. And we're always gonna be available to answer any questions that you might have. So please send them our way. There's also a form on that website address that I shared that you can enter any question and just you can reach reach us directly and we will respond with whatever resource help you might need. And then what we're really excited about is in Q4 and Q1 integrating all this inspected clean information and all this travel, um, trusted travel advice through our AAA travel products starting in Q4. So that badge that Scott shared about the designation and how it will now show that the hotels have been inspected clean, that information is gonna be readily available for all of the consumers and all of the members that visit the AAA travel products. We are also going to be able to come back to the industry and show some of the aggregated data and show how the industry is performing, which is another opportunity that we're excited about to be able to share that expertise across the industry. And once we get probably within six months to 12 months, we get that information, we'll be happy um, to share that back out in forums like this. And then last but not least, we're also going to support the Inspected Clean rollout with a consumer campaign so that we can make sure that all of our members are aware of the Inspected Clean program. Um, so that will be coming in Q4 and Q1 as well. 
So again, please go to um, that website address. I think you'll find it extremely helpful for all of your um, needs to answer questions about the Inspected Clean program. So with that, I'll turn it over to Julie. Okay. I was just gonna say, uh, just a reminder to folks, you know, feel free to enter questions into the chat if yes. you have them now, and uh, we'll, we'll try to answer them before the end of our time. Uh, as Dawn referenced, there are some public education, PR opportunities available here, in particular to the properties. So, Julie, can you talk a little bit about the PR aspect? Of Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thanks to everyone for that, that great overview of the program. I just wanted to quickly touch on some of the PR and marketing opportunities that do open up to our hotels once they've uh, been inspected with this ATP testing and then are recognized as inspected clean. Uh, so hotels that participate in our official appointment uh, logo licensing program have always been able to display that their, their diamond designation. If we can go to the next slide, um, now, once you pass this ATP testing, you will be able to, and, and you're an official appointment property, you'll also be able to promote uh, this new inspected clean badge. Um, and this opens up opportunities to use that logo on your website and other marketing materials, but also, and, and what's dear and near, near and dear to my heart is being able to promote that via earned media, PR, announcing it with a press release, uh, sharing on social media, any channels as you see fit. Um, so I've included the email address there so you can reach out to the team that manages that official appointment program if, if you're not already involved with that um, to learn more. I know they'd be happy to assist. Uh, but in addition to those opportunities at the hotel property level, um, our team here at the national office, as well as our clubs, AAA Northeast and, and all of the clubs across the country, we are all regularly working to promote the Diamond program uh, in a variety of ways throughout the year. Uh, you may be familiar, especially if you're a four and five diamond uh, property of our that, that annual announcement that we do each year, typically in Q1, where we do highlight all of the four and five diamond hotels and restaurants that have earned that designation over the previous 12 months. Um, that's a, a big kind of kickoff to the year for us, but certainly uh, does not stop there. We're always looking for opportunities to promote the diamond program, as well as individual hotels and restaurants that have earned diamond designation status um, through our social media and other editorial and content channels throughout the year. And this is new inspected clean recognition will certainly open up additional opportunities for that for us as, as well as to you. Um, lastly, and I, Scott mentioned last week, we did uh, have a big launch announcement for the inspected clean program uh, and the ATP testing. So definitely be on the lookout for stories on that in, in trade press and in your local media. Uh, and if you are interested in seeing that, in addition to the, um, the biz site information that Don shared, um, definitely encourage you to check out the Northeast website as well as our um, AAA national newsroom as well, uh, which is newsroom.aaa.com. Uh, there is a subscribe button there at the top so you can stay up to date on all the latest news from our team uh, in addition to this, the latest release um, from last week. So um, you can also find my contact information on that page, certainly available if, if you have any questions. I love to stay up to date on news and updates uh, from hotels and restaurants that are our diamond program. So um, feel free to reach out to me if you ever have any questions or anything we can do to assist. So I will turn it back over to Dave and I think open up for questions. Thank you, Julie. And you know, I know this is a busy day for you. Uh, in our world, we know that Julie is sitting on the big secret, which is how many people are going to travel over the 4th of July. And then the world will find that out next week. Um, but hopefully it's going to uh, dovetail with what we've seen so far uh, and be good news for the, uh, for the properties. A couple of things I maybe ask you to expand upon a little bit, uh, and you've already talked about, Scott, the inspected clean score, how does that factor into the overall rating of, of a particular diamond property? Good question. So, um, we have some basic things that are um, kind of just prerequisites, if you will, safety, cleanliness, and condition, right? You, you just Those are things that everybody has to pass. So the cleanliness won't affect which diamonds you get, and you'll just get whether you get a designation at all, right? So everybody will have to pass that, just like everybody has to meet certain basic guidelines for safety. The amenities, the service quality, what's available, the, the, the finish on the, the, the furniture, et cetera, are the things that separate out when you talk about what diamond level you get. So the, the ATP won't affect, say, it won't bump you down from a five to a four. Either it's clean or it's not, right? And so that's the approach that we've taken for this. 
Um, and we will we will continue to have our our best of housekeeping that's available. Uh, you know that that is something we recognize um, out there. And even with that, you know the ATP piece will be a, a either it passed or it did not met the standard or it didn't. Um, and then you know all the other pieces that come into that about no complaints. You know got an A by the visual visual inspection, um, et cetera, uh, will still be in place. But we're, you know, we again, I think the big thing to us, we've, the way we've been approaching is it's clean or it's not. Excellent. Alec, I am having a problem accessing the questions. Would you mind uh, asking a few of them for me, please? Uh, sure. Um, so I'm, I'm behind the scenes. I'll ask a, a, a quick one here. So, and then I'll send them to Dave in another format. So one, uh, one person asked, uh, they say, hi, uh, my inspector was here last month and conducted the swab test on four surfaces. So I assume we were part of the pilot. Will we be visited again? Um, good question. So we are um, looking at, it'll be um, starting again June 28th and looking through this time next year we're going to get to all of our all of the properties um, again you know we, we've had a couple of people that said hey you came out does that mean I get to use this new uh, this new badge unfortunately no um, because we were doing uh, what we call light touch in inspections and we wanted to make sure that the operating processes were consistent uh, before full launch and so it wouldn't be fair to anybody, both in a positive or negative way, to to do that. So um, I can't can't say when you'll be uh, when you'll be visited again. And, but that's part of the value of the program, right? The unannounced inspection. So we wouldn't want to take that away. But uh, so it will definitely we will be coming back around. But it could be any time in the next year. Another question that's popped up in the sharing of the standards, so that the the GMs can share with their teams. Yeah, so we are, uh, one of the things that we'll, we will communicate with, um, you know, if, I'm not sure what the question is, after the inspection or if it's what, what are some of the standards and the places that we'll be doing, because all the information about if they want to communicate on that, that um, the biz site that was shared and that information that was there, that, that will have all the information as well. It kind of tells you the locations and some of the stuff that we shared. Uh, the inspector will actually be letting them know right there um, during the inspection, whether they've they've passed or not, and uh, as we traditionally do, as we always do, there are also going to be reporting options available um, afterwards, where people will be able to see um, how they performed. Uh, it won't have numbers on it, but it'll show relative to kind of um, uh, kind of where the the standard is. And then the exciting thing is this time next year, once we have a full year's data, we'll actually then be able to sh share. Hey, compared to you know people in your area or these diamond compared to other people at these diamond levels whatever it might be we'll have some really 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 cool data after a year of this that we can share that'll give even more relativity to how they're performing compared to their peer sets okay and I have a question here about uh, reinspections and it's if a property should fail why should there not be a 30 or 60 day reinspect time period so the property is not negatively impacted for an entire year yeah, and this, you know, this is the um, similar question we get even with our traditional inspections, and um, it really just comes down to we, you know, we've got 27,000 places to be, and it's very, very difficult from a timing standpoint. When we can, we we absolutely try to get back, and we recognize that it's it's uh, tough for people, but the, you know, even with our traditional inspection process, if, you know, it it is a wait there is a waiting period. And even with that, we typically, or we do ask for evidence that something has changed, right? So as I said, the bigger issue that's happening right now is condition. I know that many uh, places they've, they've had to put off uh, refurbishments and other things because maybe people weren't even allowed to work or they weren't allowed to come in. They weren't allowed to be in small spaces and rooms. And so we're seeing more stuff where like carpets worn and things like that, that would be a tr traditional reason why a property might not uh, pass their inspection. and even with that situation, there would need to be, you know, there would be the waiting period, and then they would need to show evidence, you know, uh, pictures, et cetera, that there had been some kind of remediation done. 
And so this is not really a change. And I said, and as I said, they, the, the fail rates are almost exactly the same as it's been um, traditionally. So uh, we're going to stay with our, our normal process. A question about uh, the pandemic. With the property still coming back up to full speed, maybe they've got limited occupancy, um, limited amenities such as pool closures or limited breakfast. Will any of those factors impact their overall diamond rating? Um, the, we are we recognize that there are are situations where people are um, you know they've got a pool closed and those temporary things right. I think if we if we show up and they filled in the pool with dirt and uh, you know made a playground, yeah, we're, we're probably going to consider that, right? And we're going to look at that. But um, you know, the the we understand that those things are there. You know, I know as I've been out, there are still things that aren't in the room, right? That um, and maybe for like some of our four and five diamond properties, some of the stuff that we're looking at is if um, you know maybe that there's turn down service typically would need to be offered uh, without request. But we understand that there's people that don't want you in their room, so that may need to be on request, but it's still available. Those types of things that we're going to be flexible and we're going to watch, because in no way, shape, or form do we want somebody doing something that is less safe or less secure for their guests, um, or even for our inspectors that are staying there, simply to try to meet some inspection guidelines. And so we're going to understand that. But if we can see that there's been maybe some permanent change, uh, that we will be concerned about that. And at the end of the day, you know, there, there's a lot of the service and, and other things that are, it's not just about what's available, it's the way that people are treated. Um, you know, and, and so even if, even if um, you know, there's, there's maybe not turn down service available, but are the people that we're running into, are the people that we're talking to friendly, courteous, you know, looking to, to serve and help? And that can be difficult when you're short staff, right? That can be tough to, to keep your energy up and, um, you know, but, you know, I think that there are, there are certain standards like that that we're, we're going to um, hold. Uh, too, but we also recognize that there's some short-term temporary things um, that that are not as critical, but we know that as the pandemic wanes, those things will easily be added back in. Uh, a couple of questions came in about the actual testing, uh, perhaps during the pilot, and I, one of your slides may have answered this, but it was what surfaces did you perform the tests on? Yeah, so there were, we actually tested, I think, uh, between 15 and 20 different uh, surfaces as we began the pilot, and then we limited it that down. And so now there are the eight uh, locations that were in the slides, and those are available. You can see those, and we, we openly share those. Um, we, we worked a lot with, um, you know, like with Charm Sciences and other groups. We did uh, as the survey work with our um, members to find out what are the areas they're most concerned about as well as what are the high touch, highest touch areas within a hotel room. And that's kind of how we developed that list of eight. And so the, with those eight locations, they're extremely consistent. So you can look and see exactly what those are. If for any reason one of those is not available, you know, some of they don't have thermostats or they, you know, maybe they pulled the, the remotes out of the room. There are set guidelines as to what each of the uh, alternate surfaces are, just to make sure that it's very, very consistent um, and very objective. And a second question was, what was the data range of the surfaces that were tested? Um, we saw a huge, there's a huge uh, variant. So I'm a former stats guy. So I got, I had a lot of fun playing with this. Uh, you know, this is a, um, this is a single tailed distribution, right? Because you can only go down to zero and then up from there. Um, I can tell you that this bar that we've set is, is actually way towards the, the bottom end of the scale of where the machine goes to. Um, wouldn't do any good to share, I think, the, the actual numbers, because they're not going to mean anybody to you, to mean anything to anybody. They're in what are called RLUs, which are relative light units that vary depending on the machine you're using. Um, and so, but it is about where we've set this is about one standard deviation above the mean, um, which is a very standard and consistent uh, view of what is the general population set. And then that's a single-tailed uh, distribution, right? So for any of the stats guys, so I don't know if they're wanting that kind of uh, when they talk about distributions. Stats guy here starts to go into all the details. So um, I think probably 40, for what 90% of our people have just glazed over. Um, <laughs> and uh, but uh, so we know that we did we did a ton of work on this, but um, 
you know, we're not, again, sharing a specific number of where they are, it would, wouldn't, I think, wouldn't be helpful at all. So I don't think any eyes are going to glaze over with this next question, and I'm sure you already know the answer. Uh, how and when are these visits scheduled? They're not. So okay. the uh, so June 28th, it'll be, um, you know, it will they will be unscheduled visits. Um, you know, again, it, it doesn't add. I, I think it it really adds maybe like two or three minutes to our inspection total time. Um, you know, but it's we're going to be going to our standard unscheduled visit. You know, one of the key things with that is, is I, as I kind of talked about early in the, the 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 discussion, that's a key component to why people trust the AAA inspection, right? And I know that for our hotel partners, that's the difficulty, right? And and you know, it they joke and they'll tell us that you know, it, I could have been quiet all day. The minute I get a rush is the the minute you show up, right? And we we get that, but that's what happens when our guests show up, right? And so the, the, it's important that it is unannounced. And we do have a window that we try to uh, stick with when those, where there will be um, open, clean, ready rooms, right? So we're, we're, we recognize that that's it. But um, so really starting June 28th, you may see inspectors, honestly, before June 28th, there's a probability because we're, we're continuing to um, ensure that we're doing this right, continuing to collect data. So we, we may be out there from kind of a, a soft launch period, uh, but it won't count until uh, June 28th. And, uh, but it is an expectation that if, if we're there and there's that opportunity, um, that, you know, there's no opting out of the, the ATP piece. Um, and it will, but it will continue to be unannounced. So Don, for people who are wondering if they're going to see an inspector on June 29th, how do you kind of see the rest of 2021 playing out? Will it all, will it all be sort of equal throughout the country in terms of do you have to prioritize certain levels of properties over the other? What can people who are thinking about this expect, if anything? Yep, so it's 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 the same as, as it's always been. So we will get out in a very equal distribution across the country, right? We've got inspectors all throughout everywhere. And we will get out there and, and we are prioritizing because it's so important to get as many properties seen as we can and really focusing on getting those hotel inspections completed. Okay, excellent. And, and I know, Scott, you touched briefly on restaurants. I wonder um, if you could just talk a little bit more about, even though they may not be part of the ATP testing, will restaurants see any significant changes in their inspection protocols and will restaurants sort of be a little later on as you're prioritizing getting out to the hotels first absolutely one of the things that we have seen as we've talked to people in the industry is that really the the restaurant industry has been impacted um, more heavily from closures etc um you know and and we're it, it, we're having trouble even keeping up with who's open um, the services that are offered or even being allowed to be offered vary greatly across the country. And so we just don't feel like it's the right time to, to get back out there. And as you mentioned, we're, we're not going to be using ATP testing. Um, you know, it, it'd be very difficult to try to put together a comprehensive program of testing ATP without getting into people's kitchens and everything else. And, you know, we don't want to be the health department and we're not going to be in people's kitchens and, and testing all those kind of things. Um, you know, so there's there's only so many spaces on the table and your silverware and your plate that you can test and if there's food on it, you know. So the ATP testing won't be something we're looking at adding, um, as you mentioned, to the restaurant side. Um, we're still determining, um, we, which is what we did with the hotel, when's the right time? And, you know, there's no perfectly comfortable time to jump back in. Um, and, and one of the things that we do think is that, um, you know, the traditional inspections, the things we've always done, really still are uh, valuable. You know, they give information that people need and want uh, now more than ever. Uh, so I don't see the restaurant, the criteria and those types of things changing um, as we open back up. Um, it would really just be a matter of, of when and um, at what volume. Uh, you know, obviously, as our inspectors are on the road, they will be out. And so they may see our inspectors that maybe traditionally have done um, an inspection with them or, or that they may recognize or know. Uh, but uh, they'll, they'll, just be, they'll just be eating right because they're on the road but we you know we don't have a timeline yet for for uh turning back on restaurants okay and dawn maybe one more time that website 
Yes, and I think Alex is going to share it out as well, but it's approved dot triple A dot biz B I Z. So approved dot triple A dot biz. And one last question has just come in. And this will be uh, a softball for somebody. Will the best of housekeeping still be awarded in, con in conjunction with uh, inspected clean? It will, it will. And um, the, the inspected clean will be just one component of it at the traditional, you know, um, components will still be in place as far as you can't have any uh, guest complaints, et cetera, over the past year. So, you know, we may at some point decide to rebrand it to to um, align with the inspected clean piece. Uh, we honestly haven't made that determination. Um, I think we're going to do this cycle. We'll keep it as it is and we'll we'll look and see, um, you know, what has traction and what people are really wanting and what we think is going to carry value. But that program as it stands will stay exactly as it is with the addition of ATP. What name it has may change, but um, you know, other than that, but we this year we will be still awarding that. And Julie, I believe to this point, best of housekeeping has always been a good PR opportunity uh, for properties. Absolutely, yeah, especially over the last year, it's been more important than ever. So, uh, you know, we know consumers are getting back out there traveling. I know you're all seeing that in your hotels, and we're certainly seeing it in the travel data. So, um, anything we can do to support the industry and support travelers, we're, we're happy to do that. Certainly. Okay. With that said, said that brings us to the end of our time, Scott. In your rearview mirror, I see constant, or behind your car, I see constant traffic. I assume that's <laughs> 95 behind you. Uh, you're that is. That today. is. Um, <laughs> I want to thank Scott, Julie, Dawn for joining us today. I really want to thank the uh, property GMs and other folks from the Diamond Raider Properties who took the time to be here. I hope that you will reach out and ask us questions. You know, as we go through this process, that's what we're here for. Uh, thanks to everybody on behalf of AAA Northeast. I'm Dave Raposa. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe and have a great day. Thank you.